Autodesk is a huge software company that has many 3D software under its belt. But did you know that almost all of them were bought from other companies? Well, you will be surprised by how many 3D software Autodesk actually acquired, the story behind them, and their fate. So in this video, we will try to go over the history of successful and ugly Autodesk acquisitions that you probably never heard of. Before we continue, let me take a moment and tell you about the 3D scanner from 3D Maker Pro called Lynx. With the rising popularity of AR and VR, in addition to 3D printing, there is a demand for creating 3D models. And what better way to capture something than to have your own 3D scanner? Similar to photogrammetry, these scanners are able to ascertain the shape and proportions of the objects in a fraction of the time needed for photogrammetry. In case of the Lynx scanner, it is one of many 3D Maker Pro scanners, with Lynx being aimed at people who need to scan objects on a bigger scale, with a scanning area of 400 by 250 millimeters and with a working distance of 400 to 900 millimeters, boasting a precision of a 0.1 millimeter. The scanner also comes with powerful software that allows you to do all kinds of stuff and export your models into a ton of different 3D formats. So, if you are in the market for a 3D scanner, you can check out links and all the 3D Maker Pro lineup and you can find all the necessary links in the description. A lot of people may think that Autodesk actually developed 3ds Max, but the fact is, it did not develop the software in-house. 3ds Max was originally known as 3D Studio, and it was developed by Gary Yost and the Yost Group, and it was one of the first major 3D animation programs available on PC, and it was subsequently released by Autodesk Media and Entertainment Division, which was also known as Kinetics. Onodas acquired the software when it purchased the Discrete Logic Company. In 1999, Discrete, a Montreal-based software company, had previously acquired the original developer of 3D Studio, thus bringing 3ds Max into Autodesk portfolio. Since then, Autodesk has continued to develop and expand Max, making it a key product in their suite of 3D modeling and animation software. Though many people argue that Autodesk did not develop and maintain 3ds Max as it should. Regardless, acquiring Autodesk was and still a success for Autodesk, but the next acquisition made Autodesk an integral part of technology used in 3D animation and VFX studios. And what I'm talking about is FBX technology. Even though it is not a 3D software, FBX technology known for its role in 3D model exchange and animation, is now something you can't live without in any 3D software or any form of exchange of 3D models and animations. It was originally created by a company named Kaidara. Kaidara was a Canadian company that specialized in developing software for motion capture and character animation, and the FBX format was developed to address a need for a standard, interchangeable file format that could be used to transfer 3D data and animations between different software packages. And to be honest, this is really needed, because many 3D software require the stack since it solves a big problem. So FBX quickly gained popularity due to its ability to retain complex information like textures, animations, and other data vital for 3D animation and modeling. In 2004, Autodesk acquired Kaidara. This acquisition included the rights for the FBX technology. And I think Autodesk's acquisition of Kaidara and its FBX technology was a genius move, I'm not gonna lie. So, like anyone might expect, following this acquisition, Autodesk integrated FBX technology into many of its products, making it a key tool in 3D animation and modeling industry and now it is pretty much the standard. The format is widely used in today film, video game and animation projects, and it allows for seamless data transfer between different software, which is extremely useful. This was great and everything, but the next acquisition is the one that put Autodesk on the map when it comes to animation, game development and VFX. In 2006, Autodesk made a significant move in the entertainment industry by acquiring the Alias Corporation. This acquisition was very, very, very important because Alias was the developer of several high-profile and widely used software, including Maya, Motion Builder, and Sketchbook. And let me tell you, 
on a desk was really lucky with this one. Maya, which I'm sure you have heard of, was already a leading software in film, game development and visual effects industries. Motion Builder, on the other hand, was another key alias product, specialized in 3D character animation and was particularly renowned for its real-time 3D engine and motion capturing editing tools. I think after this, Autodesk started thinking about dominating the entertainment industry because they made Maya even more mainstream in animation, game development, and other fields. So the integration of Maya and Motion Builder in particular complemented Autodesk's existing 3D tools like Max, because basically back then, they got two of the best 3D software on the market, which were competing for dominance. Sketchbook also added another dimension to Autodesk offerings, catering to the growing market of digital illustrators and concept artists. But the thing is, all 3D software that Autodesk had actually lacked a solution for the demanded high-quality editing and modeling, also known as sculpting. So their next target was set on Mudbox. Mudbox was originally developed by Skymatter, a company founded by artists who worked on the Lord of the Rings films, which were very popular in the early 2000s. These guys developed Mudbox to address the need for a more intuitive and artist-friendly tool for high-resolution sculpting and texturing. In the early days, Mudbox was amazing and stood out for its ability to allow artists to sculpt and paint highly detailed 3D characters and environments, making its way to professionals in the film, game development, and television industries. But over time, especially in the last 10 years or so, Mudbox lost significant market share to ZBrush, which is now the only industry standard software when it comes to sculpting, in addition to software like 3D Code, which is used here and there. Since 2020, no new features or bug fixes have been implemented except for new installers when it comes to Mudbox. However, the yearly new releases didn't stop, which is a good thing to a certain extent. This in addition to its very cheap price, but I personally recommend ZBrush because practically Mudbox is on life support right now. If you think that what happened to Mudbox was bad, let me tell you that the fate of the next software that Autodesk acquired just a year after Mudbox was actually worse. I'm talking about Softimas XSI. This acquisition in 2008 was a significant event in the 3D computer graphics industry after the software was passed around by different companies before landing in the lap of Autodesk. Softimage, which had been a subsidiary of Avid Technology at the time, was renowned for its software, particularly Softimage XSI, widely used in film, television, and video game industries for its advanced character animation and visual effects capabilities. We actually talked about Softimage many times, but the gist of it is Autodesk didn't really intend to keep it alive especially considering the fact that they have Maya, which basically did the same tasks for the most part. But Autodesk has to maintain both. This resulted in the termination of Softimage around 2014, leaving thousands of artists and the industry at large devastated by this move, which I believe was something very few artists, especially veteran 3D artists, can forgive Autodesk for doing. The next crusade of Autodesk was in 2011, with the acquisition of Scaleform GFX. Scaleform was renowned for high-quality 2D and 3D user interfaces in video games. But here is the thing. Before the acquisition, Scaleform GFX has already established itself as a crucial tool for game developers, and I think the most important part about it is its efficient vector graphics rendering and compatibility with Adobe Flash. This compatibility was particularly significant because it allowed game developers to create intricate UI elements using familiar Flash tools, which Scanform would then seamlessly integrate into various game engines. But one of the most iconic technologies Autodesk acquired is a simulation technology that every VFX studio wanted to get their hands on, and I'm talking about Nyad. Autodesk acquired Bifrost, originally known as Nyad, through the purchase of Exotic Matter the creators of Nyad Fluid Simulator. This acquisition was a strategic move by Autodesk to enhance their capabilities in fluid simulation and visual effects, an area where Nyad had already proven itself to be highly effective. It was actually used in several high-profile movies, 
Notably, it played a significant role in the creation of Louis de Fax in films like Avatar and The Chronicles of Narnia. And for example, in Avatar, Nyad was instrumental in simulating the ocean surface, which was a crucial aspect of the film visual effects, like it did in the second movie just recently. Nyad was also known for its advanced fluid simulation technology, which was appealing for Autodesk product line, particularly for integration with Autodesk Maya. And now, after being revamped, Nyad came to the surface again with a new name which is Bifrost. The technology from Nyad allowed Autodesk to expand the capabilities of Maya, transforming Bifrost from just a fluid simulator into a more comprehensive tool. This evolution enabled Bifrost to compete with other simulation software and node-based packages like Houdini. But a lot of people think that it is too late, because the gap of few years between Nyad and Bifrost allowed many artists and VFX studios to move to another and better options like Houdini. The next software developer Autodesk acquired is Solid Angle the developer of Arnold Render Engine, and it did this in April of 2016. Arnold, which is known for its advanced ray tracing and efficient GI, had become a preferred tool in the creative industries like ArcViz and VFX, and it was used in Oscar-winning films like Ex Machina and The Martian, in addition to the Emmy-winning series Game of Thrones. And I think Arnold was yet again one of the best things Autodesk put their hands on, because after many years, they got a decent render engine that ships with their flagship software in entertainment fields. I mean software such as Max and Maya, which means you got now Arnold by default when you got Max or Maya. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in the next one.